So right now I'm going to show you how to take a landscape photo and add all kinds of life and drama to it by using lighting effects inside of Photoshop. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. First of all, welcome. And I've got a great new tutorial for you this week. We're gonna be ramping it up. I think this is our fifth part using the lighting effects filter. This time we're gonna start looking at some of the gloss and metallic and see what that does. But also we're gonna be lighting this uh, photograph here that I grabbed from Adobe Stock. And if you haven't watched the other parts, I'll give you guys links to those underneath. We've circled all the way back to photography and we're gonna be doing this landscape photo. And by the way, guys, don't forget to subscribe if you are not part of the cafe crew. Okay, before we apply this effect, we wanna make sure our settings are correct. So go up under image, under mode, make sure you're in RGB mode, which you probably are, and in 8-bit channel. If you're in 16-bit channel, just simply click on 8-bit channel and it will convert it to 8-bit. There's one other thing you need to check. Under your Photoshop preferences, go down to performance, and under performance, make sure that use graphics processors turned on. That's your GPU. Click OK. Now we're ready to go ahead, but before we do, let's do one more thing. So I wanna work on a smart object, and this will enable us to go back and change the settings later if we wanna kinda of tweak them, if it's not quite what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the background. And this is just going to be easy for me to show you the before and afters while I'm doing that. And then we're going to right click where it says background copy and choose convert to smart object. You should see this little icon. That just means now when we apply the filter, it's going to be applied as a smart filter. So let's go up under the filter and we're going to go down to render. Under render, we want to go down to lighting effects. Click. All right, here's our lighting effects. And you might see something like this. You might see something different, but it doesn't really matter. If you don't see this widget in the middle or something that looks like that, hit Control H or Command H on the Mac, and that toggles backwards and forwards between it. If you still don't see it, make sure that graphics processor is on. If it's still not working, restart your computer and then try again. All right, what we wanna do is we wanna start with a preset. So this comes with a bunch of presets here. So just click on the preset and go down. We're gonna start with the two o'clock spotlight. And then you should see something like this. Now this is the light here. If the light is not showing, make sure that eyeball is turned on. All right, what we wanna do now is we wanna zoom out so we can have a look. So. See this here, you can click on there or hold down the Alt or the Option key and use a scroll wheel on your keyboard to zoom in and out. There we go. So we want to resize this. If you click on these dots, we can change the width of this by dragging. So let's make it narrower. But we want to see the light a little better. See this little widget? Just click on that intensity and drag it all the way up. Now if we want to make it shorter, Click on the scale width, that's just the dot there, and we can do that. Notice you can also rotate it as you drag it. Now, if you just wanna rotate it and you don't wanna change the size, all you need to do is move outside of this oval area and then drag. And now you can rotate it without sizing it. If you wanna move it, click inside, not into this area here. Well, actually, you can click anywhere inside that oval to move it. Now notice there's two ovals. There's the outside oval, which is where this effect is gonna be constrained to from this light. And the inside area is where the light is gonna emit from. Think of it as the light bulb. And that's known as the hotspot. Let's make the hotspot a little bit smaller. So if we go over here and we click it down, we can resize that hotspot. Notice that we're just dragging the size of it. And let's make it about that big. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's make it a little bit narrower, maybe a little bit shorter. And I'm just gonna kind of drag it here and I want it to just kind of go off that edge there. Maybe a little bit steeper, there we go. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna zoom in so we can see a little bit better. 
Control zero or command zero on the Mac will take you up to 100% magnification. Now notice here, we've already got our intensity all the way at 100 and we wanna kind of see this and it's still a little too dark. Well, what we can do is go down under exposure and we can increase this a little bit. And see what we're doing now is we're increasing that exposure as well. So we're playing around between the exposure and the intensity. Now, if you want to push the intensity even higher than where it is, we can do that by clicking on the color here. And there's an intensity slider here. If we increase this, this actually makes it brighter because what it's doing for the tech ease of use is using a 32 bit lighting. So we can click OK. And then that way now it just gives us a little bit more leeway on this. So we can pull that down a little bit. All right, let's zoom out a little bit. Hold the out of the option key and I want to zoom out because there's another control here that's really important. That's ambience. If I move ambience to the left, notice the photo's dark and only the light emitting from here now is starting to show. If I turn it up brighter, it brightens up the entire image. See that? So what we want to do is we want to look outside of our oval here in this area and in this area and adjust the ambience until our outside area is about as dark as we want to see it. And I think about there is a good amount of darkness. Now let's just kind of click and drag in here and pull this in. Notice as I pull it in, this light hits here more, but then we get this uh, penumbra behind it. What you don't want to do is have this appearing here. You definitely want it outside of the photo Otherwise, you're going to see this edge and it's going to look very fake. So let's click it and drag it. So it's just off the photo there. And now we've got this light coming down, hitting our, our uh, sprout here. Okay, let's just give it just a little bit more intensity. Now, what I want to do is just give this a little bit of color. Although this light already comes of color, you can see that's a slight yellow. Let's click on the color up here. And what we want to do is give it a little golden color. So just drag down a little bit to see this bar. This is our color. Drag down a little until it's just a little bit. We don't want it orange, but we want it gold. A little bit more gold than just that yellow. And then we want to add the color. Now don't go and click in here because that's a very saturated color. And see, it looks like there's a colored gel over there. That's not what we're looking for. So just take it over to this side. Look up here. You'll notice a little bit of color. There we go. Just a touch of color is going to go a long way. So don't get too carried away with the saturation on those colors. Click OK. And now we've added our light and our color here. Now there's one other thing we're going to do. We're going to give it a dreamy glow. On some of the other tutorials we worked with the texture, we're not going to use the texture channel on this one. But what we are going to do is we're going to take our metallic and we're going to pull it all the way to the left. Notice how we got a little bit more contrast when we did that. And we're going to control this with this gloss. Notice what happens. If we pull the gloss to the left, it's even more contrasty, very, very sharp. As we increase it, see how it softens it and creates this glow, this dreamy afternoon glow. Look at that. See, like the sun is just really bathing it. Obviously, we don't want to go that far. Let's pull it back a little bit. And we just want to dial in some of that dreaminess. In fact, I'm going to click on the colorize here. Because I want to make it more golden, it's too yellow. Let's just drag it down just a touch. There we go. Now we're starting to get into that golden kind of a color. And now what we're going to do is just really find a balance here between the intensity and our exposure. So let's pull the exposure down just a little bit and pull our intensity up. And move this light. So what we want is this light beam to just kind of hit in here. And let's just fine tune that gloss. Just get it where you want. And see how we've got this nice kind of a dreamy look. I might even pull back on the ambience a little bit for this. And let's go up again with our hotspot. Let's just turn it up a little bit. Make it a little bigger. Turn up our exposure and there. I feel like that's hitting it quite nicely. If you're worried about this kind of bokeh blowing out, you can just drag it off and then just increase the size of the light. That's another way of doing it. So you could go back this way if you wanted and click here um, 
right there and make that light a little bigger and drag it in and see how you can kind of change the way that beam is kind of coming in there. That's quite nice. Let's make it a little bit wider now. And let's click OK to apply it. All right, now we've got this beam of light coming in. If we look at this before and after, you can see this is really giving it a magical glow. Now, the reason we used a smart filter is if you wanted to adjust something, we could go under here, under lighting effects, double click, and this will take us back into the lighting effects filter, and we could play around with it. We could click OK to apply, and that a change will be applied, or if you liked how it was before, just click Cancel, and we can go with this. I'm actually quite happy with this. But what I want to do now is I want to add some little particulates in the air to just really finish this off. And of course, if you wanted to add any contrast or anything like that, you can always do that with curves and other adjustments here. But let's see how it looks. Let's create a new layer. And now we're going to create some, you know, little dust particles. So we're going to grab our brush. The B key will select the brush tool. Make sure we're working with white as the foreground color. And let's go up to the brush settings up here. Now under brushes, we want to go with our soft round brush. You'll see it under general brushes. Click on soft round. And we're going to drop the size down. I've taken it down to about 14 there. Let's have a look. How's that going to look? That's actually not bad. We're going to do some more settings though. Click here on the brush setting here, and this will open up our brush settings. Now with our brush settings, what we want to do is a few things. We want to scatter this so we don't have to paint all the particulates. So let's go to scattering. Under scattering, we're going to turn on both axes. So this is going to scatter both ways. And watch what happens if I scatter it all the way up. See these particles start to appear now. Let's keep the count at one. But let's increase the count jitter all the way up. It's going to give us a little bit more randomness. Now let's turn on shape dynamics. And under shape dynamics, what we want to do is hit the size jitter. Let's take that up and then see how that's going to vary the size of these now. Jitter just means randomness or mix it up a little bit. So they're not all going to be the same size. And this makes it look like some are closer, some are further away. You can set a minimum diameter if you want, but in this case, we're not going to. We could also play around here and use pen settings with our Wacom pen. We could use pen pressure. I am going to use my Wacom pen, although, of course, you could use this with a mouse if you wanted. It'll work just the same. Uh, click on the link underneath. Um, we're giving away two Wacom tablets. Uh, check out that link and you'll see how you can... Uh, Windows tablets. All right, so what we're going to do here is let's go up under brush tip shape. And what we want to do is we want to get more spacing here. So we're going to turn the spacing all the way up pretty high. Let's take it to about there. And if I look at the brush tip size here, I'm going to drop it down even smaller. Let's drop it down to about a 12 for this particular image. And let's hide the brush settings and see how it looks. Okay, that's pretty good. But I want to go not quite there yet. So let's just click on our settings again. Let's make our size a little bit bigger. And I'm going to take the spacing all the way up. Let's have a look now. How's that going to look? Yeah, that's looking more like what I want. Okay, so either with your pen or your mouse, all we're going to do is just dabble a few here. Now make sure you're working on the new layer. Very, very important. And we're just dabbing, adding a few little, little particulates. Maybe a couple around the edge there. You know, just like dust particles would be in the air. Okay, we're pretty close. Now, what I want to do with these is just give them a little bit of a glow. Because notice how that sun's hitting here and it's creating that beautiful glow on these leaves. We want to make sure we're getting the same thing on these particulates or particles. So what we're going to do is go down to our layer style. Just click on the little FX. It's going to pop open. And now we want to give it an outer glow. So click on outer glow. There it is. Now it looks a little weird, but blue's nice if you have like pixie dust or you know fairy dust or something like that. But let's click on the color here and we're going to change it to that nice golden color. In fact, we could just move outside and notice as we move out of here, we get this eyedropper and we could actually just click here on one of our little highlight areas here 
and that will select the color. That will work as well. Let's click OK. All right, what we want to do now is we want to turn the spread down to about one. We want it really low. And now we're going to take the size and see as we increase that size, let's increase the opacity all the way up. Let's take that size down and we're just giving it a slight glow there. See how that's kind of going there? Maybe take our spread up to two and play again. Uh, there we go. See, now we've got this around there. It's a little bit much, so let's take our opacity down. We just want a little bit, just a hint of that glow. We don't want these glowing, you know, like crazy. Just a hint of that glow. There we go. That's looking quite nice. Maybe a little bit more there. And just give it a touch of noise. What that does is it just gives it that little bit of a just a little bit of grain there, which makes it look a little sparkly. So if we look at that before the particulates and then after, they kind of add that little something. Let's zoom in a little bit and we can see there's that photo. So if we look at this before and after, you can see a big difference. Now, I definitely encourage you guys to go back and look at the other parts. This is the fourth part in this series on working with lighting effects. It's something you guys really love and so I'm continuing with it. Now, I'm really curious, um, have you guys been following along? Let me know in the comments. And also, are you guys enjoying this series? Drop a comment and let me know if you guys are learning something new. And if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, first of all, welcome. Uh, we've got new Photoshop tutorials every single week and all you need to do is just hit that subscribe button right now. And also, if you've been watching and you haven't subscribed yet, tap that button and then you'll be subscribed to our channel so you can get that new tutorial every week. Make sure you turn on all those notifications so that YouTube will let you know when I upload that new video. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.